to play, what to play, what to play, what to play. Well, that ain't right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to my very first game review. And the whole reason that I even kind of wanted to start doing this at all is that there are a lot of games that a lot of people haven't even heard about that are actually pretty high up there on quality. First up on my list is an arcade game that came to NES, Operation Wolf. This game is surprisingly badass, and I was surprised that I hadn't heard of it until we had randomly added it to our collection. This game came out on a laundry list consoles and home computer system, but the arcade game was out two years before being released on NES and four years before being on the Sega Master System. The arcade version used a light gun similar to the NES Zapper, but looked a lot more like an Uzi and had a motor inside to simulate the feeling of gun firing. Which is pretty fucking badass, like, fuck. The one I'm focusing on today is the NES release, which actually supports the NES Zapper, which is fucking awesome. Now, I read that the Sega Master System and the ZX Spectrum were able to use their guns as well, but I don't know if that's true or not. I have no idea. This ain't a bad game in my opinion, actually. It actually ended up spawning three sequels, which had a pretty fucked up naming system if you ask me. So number one was Operation Wolf, this guy right here. Two was Operation Thunderbird. Three was Operation Wolf. Three. Four was Operation Tiger. Don't know why the fuck they couldn't just call it Operation Wolf 1, 2, 3, and 4, but Anyways, let's look a little bit more at the actual game itself. Operation Wolf, Take No Prisoners? Is that a subtext for the title or just a statement? Well, it looks like it's good. Commando looking dude firing off a machine gun, shit exploding in the background. And Taito actually wasn't that bad of a publisher for the most part. Holy shit, you can actually see a guy in the background getting burnt to death. That's fucking metal. Alright, let's pop this fucker in. Looks and sounds good so far. Decent level select screen. Seems like it moves from the top right to the bottom right, and then top center, bottom center, etc. Hmm. Well, that's kind of ass backwards, but okay. <laughs> well, the music died pretty fucking quick. Holy shit, people are flying in out of every fucking crack and crevice. Each of them are firing right at ya. There's a clip of ammo on the ground falling out of fucking birds. Why do. Birds carry clips, but okay. What the hell's going on here? Helicox suckers and tanks? What the fuck? It looks like we had a decent HUD, but it's really hard to look at when you got all this shit ripping your face apart. The damage meter seems to wrap around the side of the screen, which is pretty strange. The enemies are numbered, meaning you have to kill a certain amount to pass a stage. And your health and ammo carry over, which actually makes this a pretty good challenge. Oh shit, a fucking ambush? That's not good, we don't have much health to begin with here. Holy fuck, man, how are you supposed to make it through this shit? Well, we made it through. Seems like we're at a riverbed or something, boats come cruising through to fuck your day up. Seems like different animals drop different items sometimes, and if you hit a civilian, it actually hurts you, and they scream no to make you feel even worse about your fuck-ups. You can pick up the free icon that looks like a bullet to have unlimited ammo for a short time, which really helps a lot. It also helps to save your grenades for the boats and tanks, but make sure you save at least one to kill some asshole holding the female prisoner as a shield at the end. Wait a minute. Won't the grenade kill her too? Why does it just kill that guy? But you know what? Fuck it. I'm satisfied with that. So now we're in a village, which just happens to be the most heavily guarded village in the whole- Are you fucking kidding me? Well, at least I gotta fucking continue, that's sweet. The health carrying over from the last mission is a bitch to deal with. Sometimes you can find these random dynamite icons which act as a grenade. At that point, why don't they just give me a grenade so I can fucking save it for later? There's also a little pee bag thing? Power bag? I don't know what the hell it is, but it gives you a little bit of health back. Well, that didn't seem as hard as the others. Now we're at the ammo dump? Okay, well, I see nothing has really changed aside from the number of enemies to kill. Like, goddamn, people are fucking flying in from every angle. Holy shit. Well, uh, we beat it. Sweet. 
And got more ammo? Sweet! Fuck yeah! Fully loaded! So in this level, you basically need to escort prisoners from the POW camp from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. He just came out and stabbed him! What a dick! Ah, fucking damn it. Well, we didn't do half bad, but this is about as far as I've ever made it. Overall, it's a pretty fun game, especially when you're passing the controller back and forth between a couple friends trying to get as far as you can get. While it's not as pretty as its arcade counterpart, shit, it's fucking awesome. It plays well for being an NES port of an arcade game. The fact that the music just kind of cuts out so randomly, I mean, like, it starts out, there's plenty of music going, cool. And it actually sounds decent, it doesn't sound horrible, and then it just kind of dies. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you did, let me know in the comments, or like, try subscribing, maybe. It's a shameless self-promotion, but uh, like it or not, I'm making more of these reviews. You can't stop me. Take care, everybody.